Hello YouTubers, welcome to installing a HVAC duct booster part two of two. But there might be three parts, so this is kind of part two and a half. This video will be introducing a booster control strategy where the furnace control module electronic air cleaner output terminal will be used to simply turn the HVAC booster on whenever the furnace blower is running and off when it's not running. This is my preferred strategy, but it won't be implemented now. I need to get parts and do more planning for this. This will just be an introduction. Also in this video, I'll show my initial, albeit temporary, strategy of using a simple temperature controller to control the HVAC booster. Now let's get started. The installation manual for my make and model furnace shows in figure 45 where the EAC terminals are located on the control module. It also indicates that the output provides one amp at 115 volts AC. The idea here is to use this output to control the HVAC booster. Looking at my furnace control module, the EAC and neutral screw terminals can be seen all the way at the bottom far right of the module. I attached a pair of clip leads to the EAC terminals, then ran them to a location outside the blower compartment and hooked them to a DMM. So we can see here that when the furnace blower starts up, the EAC output goes to 115 volts AC plus, just as the manual indicated it would. This is as far as I've progressed with this idea, but it's enough to prove it'll work. Now I can get an appropriate AC relay to wire in and control the HVAC booster. Meanwhile, I'm taking the easy route and using a BN Link brand temperature controller to get this booster up and running. That's up next in this video. I actually bought the BN Link digital temperature controller because it has good reviews, but just as importantly, it is ETL listed. But I was surprised to discover that even though the Amazon listing and the BNLink.com listing claim that the, the device is ETL listed, there's no indication of that on the device itself. There's also no ETL indication on the device packaging or the included literature. So I've contacted the company and asked them to provide the ETL listing information for this product. I'd like to resolve this before uploading this video. So this temperature controller has a couple keyholes in the back for mounting. And I'm going to take the simple route and just mount it up here. I already put the screws up. There they are. And this is a nice, seems like a really nice quality, very heavy power cord. Feed it over the top here. And while I'm up here, I'll plug the blower in. I'm plugging it into the heating receptacle. Okay, I'll demonstrate what happens now 
when you turn the power on on that temperature controller and the temperature probe is not plugged into it. It's displaying three E's across the top. That's to indicate an error. And the error is that the temperature probe is not plugged in. So I'll just correct that error by plugging the probe in. And now you can see And now you can see that the lower number there is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature set point that we're controlling to at the moment. I need to adjust that. And then the top number there, 74.3, that's the temperature that the probe is reading right now. And it should be dropping. I had it in my hand a bit, so it's cooling off now. Okay, I'm going to make some adjustments to uh, control points and such on here. And I'll try to capture it as good as I can. So I simply taped that sensor on top of the duct so it'll feel the change in temperature on the outside of the duct as the AC is going through it. The cooled air will cool the plenum. And it's currently, re currently reading 65. I have no idea what the air temperature is inside the duct, but it's 65 on the outside. So I'm thinking that anything below 70 is probably good. Well, I have to figure out what it is, but I'll set this to 70. So you hit set, and S, it looks like SU, it's SV, that's the set value. And then down, I'll push the down button. I'm just going to hold it down and scroll it down to 70. And then you hit the power button to set that. So now the new set value is 70 degrees, 70.0, and it's currently reading 64.1. So now I'm relying on that duct to heat up to 70 in order to shut the booster fan off. As you can see here, the fan is running. That's what that indicator light means. The uh, duct booster, not the fan, the duct booster fan. <laughs> So I'm going to let this AC unit cycle through, you know, go through its cycle. And we'll see how it ends up. Hopefully it'll go above 70 when it's done. So I just have to wait and see. Okay, so the AC blower shut off in the furnace. I changed the set point to 65. As soon as the duct reaches 65 degrees, the vent booster will shut off. And that will continue to warm up. It'll be interesting to see what it goes to.
Well, the system was functioning fine the way it was with the uh, temperature sensor taped to the top of the duct. But it had too much hysteresis in the system that way. It was way too slow to respond. So I just uh, popped a hole in the duct, put a little rubber grommet there, and I'm putting the temperature probe inside the duct where it will be directly in the airstream of the uh, re refrigerated air passing through. So now I'm waiting for the system to cycle again. And I think I can turn that down even more. So let's see, set, the set point value of let's try 59 and a half. The lower I can get the set value, the better. It'll function better. And by that I mean if the temperature drops that far in the basement, the blower will come on whether I need it or not. So the lower I can get that, that reduces the chance more of false running of the blower. Okay, I'm just waiting for the system to cool now. That way it only has to be a tenth of a degree below the set point for the booster to come on. Well, of half a degree below the set point before the booster would come on. You just saw me change it to a tenth of a degree. So now when the temperature probe hits 56.9 degrees, the HVAC booster will turn on. Well, that was very responsive, both coming on and turning off. So that's a great improvement, inserting the probe inside the duct where it should have been in the first place. This system has been doing a good job cooling the room for almost two weeks without a glitch. There will probably be another installment at some point when I change the HVAC booster control system over to EAC signal control. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.